Sir Isaac Newton, one of the greatest scientists to have ever lived, has been described as the supreme genius and most enigmatic character in the history of science. He's known for his three greatest contributions, the nature of white light, calculus, and perhaps the most important of all, the theory of universal gravitation. For years, this theory has been widely accepted as a pure fact, forming the base for many studies and other related theories on the same. But now, physicists claim that it's time to ditch Newton's theory in favor of a new theory of gravity. Welcome to Fact Nominal, and in today's video, we take a close look at the theory that some physicists believe should replace our current theory of gravity, and why. Legend has it that in 1665, Sir Isaac Newton, an English physicist and mathematician, observed an apple fall from a tree, prompting him to ask what is probably one of the most important questions ever asked. Why did the apple fall towards the ground? Why not sideways or even upwards? While he stayed at the family farm, between the years 1665 and 1666, when the bubonic plague struck England, the chance observation in the family apple orchard led him to discover that gravity is a universal force. Not only did it apply to things like apples falling to the ground, but he also applied the same theory to understand the planetary system, the moon, the sun, and beyond. He compared the straight path of the apple falling towards the ground to the curved path of a fired cannonball. He wondered what would happen if the cannonball were to go faster and faster, coming to the conclusion that it would eventually fall around the curve of the earth forever and never really hit the ground. It is this falling forever motion that describes the movement of the moon around the earth and the earth around the sun. Thus was born the theory of gravity. Though there had been others who had thought about it way before him, Sir Isaac Newton was the first person to ever create and publish a comprehensive theory of gravity that applied to all objects, large and small. Being an excellent mathematician, he applied mathematical equations to support the same that were way ahead of their time. Gravitation is the force of attraction that pulls any two bodies towards each other. All objects in the universe attract each other with a certain amount of force, some with far greater force and some with a force that's either too weak or negligible. According to Newton's law of gravitation, every object in the universe attracts every other object, such that the force exerted will be proportional to the product of the masses and inverse of proportional to the square of the distance between the two. His thorough calculations and studies showed that gravitational force is a central, universal, mutual, and mass-dependent force that's independent of the medium and the surrounding environment. Up until then, no other study on gravity or explanation of planetary systems and orbits had ever been given. So, even though there would be criticism and newer, better calculations of the same theory in the years to come, from the likes of Albert Einstein, for example, until that happened, Newton's theory of gravitation was taken as gospel. As groundbreaking and revolutionary as Newton's theory of gravitation was, of course, it was far from perfect. There were some inherent problems with his calculations which did leave some room for doubts. With the help of Newton's laws of physics, we can easily model the motions of the planets in the solar system quite accurately. However, during the 1970s is when scientists happened to hit a roadblock. They discovered that these laws didn't quite work when it came to disk galaxies. What was happening here is that the stars at their outer edges were moving much faster than what was predicted by Newton's theory, since they were so far from the gravitational force of all the matter at their center. When it comes to the planet Mercury, it was observed that Newton's laws couldn't quite predict its motion accurately. Mercury has something called a precession, meaning its orbit around the sun varies slightly every time that it goes around the sun. The shift in its orbit is much more severe than what had been predicted by Newton's laws. No one was quite able to explain why. 
1859, French mathematician Urbain Le Verrier offered what could be a possible solution. He suggested that it's quite possible astronomers may have missed out on something, which wasn't too far-fetched of an idea. After all, it was Le Verrier who himself noticed the oddities in the orbit of Uranus and, through closer study of the variations, actually deduced the existence of Neptune. So, perhaps he was on to something yet again. He suggested that the odd motion of Mercury could be attributed to something called dark matter. He claimed that it was due to a mystery planet called Vulcan that was throwing off the precession of Mercury and because of its extreme proximity to the Sun, we weren't able to actually see it in the sky. The problem is, though, astronomers were never able to find this so-called planet. Le Verrier, too, was unable to explain Mercury's strange orbit. But soon enough, that mystery was solved with Einstein's theory of general relativity. He showed that mass warps space. This warping wouldn't exactly affect those planets that are far away from the Sun, but for Mercury, being in such proximity would experience its strange precession. One simple way to visualize what's happening with Mercury's orbit is to think of it as rolling a penny along a surface that suddenly curves. As the penny goes around that curve, it changes its speed and course. But if you're unable to see the curve, it would seem as if the penny took an inexplicable turn on its own. Thus, Einstein put a rest to the mystery of Mercury's orbit, boiling it down to simply being an error in Newton's calculations that didn't make room for such an exception. But does this mean that dark matter doesn't exist at all? Turns out, what we've theorized as the halo of dark matter that surrounds the galaxy, much like the planet Vulcan, could simply be a figment of our imagination. It also raises the question, could it also be that Einstein's general relativity has a flaw? This school of thought has actually been present among many scientists and physicists for years now. A growing number of physicists are convinced that it's time to do away with the older theories of gravity and replace them with a newer, more modified one. Newton's laws of physics and theory of gravitation have some minor inaccuracies that don't quite explain everything. But even the slightest bit of inaccuracy or error is a major cause for concern. It brings to question whether the theory is as applicable across the board as was once thought. Physicists have now been arguing for an alternative explanation of gravity, one which requires no dark matter for its explanation and seems to be a considerably better theory. It's able to account for evidence at a wide variety of scales as compared to the ones that have preceded it so far. In 1983, Israeli physicist Mordechai Milgram initiated a new research program in cosmology called Modified Newtonian Dynamics, or Milgramian Dynamics, or simply put, MOND. In a series of three papers, Milgram proposed a set of postulates describing how Newton's laws of gravity and motion should be changed in regimes of very low acceleration. The postulates were designed to explain the asymptotic flatness of galaxy rotation curves without ever needing to prove the existence of dark matter for the same. He was successfully able to show that a number of other predictions follow from his three postulates, and he proposed these predictions as tests of the theory. So, what is MOND all about? Mond's main hypothesis states that gravity begins to behave differently from Newtonian physics when it becomes extremely weak as it occurs at the edges of galaxies. This would explain why stars, planets, and gas near the periphery of over 150 galaxies rotate more quickly than would be predicted based just on their mass. The conventional cosmological model heavily relies on dark matter and holds the assumption that there's more dark matter than visible matter in the universe. But this is where Mond's theory is different. It doesn't make assumptions, but rather is able to predict and anticipate the future. Dark matter content of galaxies is highly unknown and dependent on the galaxy's history and how it was formed, which is not always information that's available or known. The most striking limitation of the traditional theory is all related to dark matter. 
The current cosmological model only works by postulating the existence of dark matter, a substance that's never been detected. The issue with this is that the original models, which suggested galaxies have dark matter halos, made a big mistake. They assumed that the dark matter particles provided gravity to the matter around it, but were not affected by the gravitational pull of the normal matter. Though this may have simplified the calculations, it doesn't reflect reality. The traditional cosmological model and MOND were put to the test with a variety of astronomical observations, including the rotation of galaxies and the motions within galaxy clusters. The study assigned a theoretical flexibility score of minus two and plus two for each instance that they were compared. A model would receive a score of minus two if it was able to predict something with clarity and accuracy without looking at the data. A plus two, on the other hand, suggests that anything goes. Over the course of 32 tests that were conducted, the physicists discovered that the conventional cosmological model received an average score of minus 0.25, where the MOND received an average of plus 1.69. This made it quite clear that MOND seems to be more accurate and applicable to a much broader spectrum. So far, the theory has no significant issues and feasibly accords with all the necessary facts. As of now, there's still much debate over doing away with the conventional theory of gravity and its implications in favor of a newer and more accurate version of the same. But it seems like, with time, more and more physicists, scientists, and researchers are likely to gravitate towards MOND. Pun intended. Although completely doing away with and canceling dark matter might not be happening anytime soon, a new theory like MOND could give us the much needed accuracy and ability to predict rather than speculate. So what do you think? Should the Melgromian theory replace Newton's theory of gravitation? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more videos from us. Thanks for watching and see you next time.